Hello folks, welcome to NetCruiser RC. It's time to reveal the TLR 22 5.0 DC Elite. It's done. And here it is. Painting's done, chassis's done, electronics done. Here it is. I really like it. Now, my wheels and tires have not come in yet. Uh, that's one little nitpicky thing about the Elite kit is that you do not get wheels in the kit. All the other TLR 22 5.0 kits come with wheels. Um, they're yellow because they're TLR and it really would have kind of clashed with this color scheme a bit. So I probably wouldn't have used them anyway. But not having them at all means I'm going to have to borrow some tires and wheels just to try this out. I'm planning to take it to the track tonight to try it on the track for the first time. So this is it. It's done. Here's the paint scheme white to black fade with a metallic red stripe. Let me bring the camera in closer so I can show you some details about what I did in the final steps of completing this buggy. The body comes pre-cut but there's one area that you do have to cut which is around the slipper clutch assembly so I did cut out around that and this is just a Tamiya paint black to white fade freehand and then I do have the, ma the center section masked off which I then use metallic red and then I back the whole thing with silver. Unfortunately, I was doing it late last night. I was doing it outside in the snow and I dropped it in the very last coat and I got the front of the nose wet and then the, all the paint started to bubble. So I quickly wiped it and this was after I had done black, white, red. I was on my second coat of red and I wiped it and yeah, so there's a little bit of a white mark there. Thankfully, it's somewhat hidden when you're looking at it at most angles, you don't even notice, but uh, yeah. Slight heartbreaker there that I messed up the very nose. Don't look at it. <laughs> Some edge bleed, so if you look really close, there's imperfections. But from afar, it gives me exactly the effect that I was looking for. And this does match my other bodies. I will probably add my own logo and stuff uh, up front later, but I'm still not happy with the quality of my own stickers. I do need to find a manufacturer to get some good quality stickers. Let me get the body off. The other change that I did make was I added a lot of Velcro. You do get, you get a little bit of Velcro with the kit, oh, but I added my own and I put it all the way along the whole edge of the body, all the way along the whole edge of the chassis. Put the fuzzy side on the chassis side. That way when you're sliding on the body, you, you do not scratch the paint off. Now I have gone one step further for protection for that and that's I did coat the inside of the body with a lot of Gorilla Tape Clear. Now this does add weight but it adds less weight than any other protection system that I've found so it's not too bad. Um, I did do that. You can see here at the front where the paint was bubbling. That's from where I got it wet. Yeah, don't look at that. <laughs> okay, body, paint, not too much to talk about there. Let's get into the electronics. I'm happy with this. I think it's my cleanest wiring job yet so here's what i did wiring wise and uh yeah it's not too bad man that, that solder looks bad look at the wiring okay <laughs> um bullet connections four mil bullets i did do that i've also made it so that the way that i plan on running this battery is like this i've made it so that this will not reach cannot accidentally reverse polarity it i have made it just short enough where it won't reach that bullet so now i know that this one's always negative this one's positive the Tekken Speed Control, it was really junky if you saw my last video, which was the uh, mock-up and servo assembly. It's better. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's way better than it was, and it seems to be working perfectly fine. Um, at some point, someone had programmed this on a hot wire, because when I was trying to go through some of the setup steps, which you can do on these Tekkens, uh, they give you a lot of light status probably won't connect because my radio's off but each one of these means something. I have two buttons here a mode and an increase and you can go through a book and you can change a lot of stuff. You can change uh, brake biased, you can change voltage cutoff, you can change punch level, all that stuff. Um, overall it seems like it's ready to go for a first test. It does has it currently does have forward brake and reverse. Being that this is the first time I'm going to be driving a two-wheel drive buggy I imagine I am going to have a lot of spin outs and stuff, so in order to stop me from jumping down off the driver's stand all the time, I'm going to leave reverse on short term and then turn it off after. So yeah, Tekken Speed Control, it's working. This is an old Tekken RS Pro. Happy with, with how it's performing on the bench. Obviously, I haven't tried it on the track yet. The servo, 
the interference problem, I did just grind it down ever so slightly on the top of this and on the top of this. It still hits. And the problem is the servo. The DS3281 Pro is just too tall. So it's this area here is too uh, tall on the DS servo. So it, it sits about a millimeter or two too forward and you have no way of bringing it back. So the only way I'm gonna be able to fix that is to change it the servo. But it's such a minor grazing. I'm just gonna drive it like this and see, can I tell on track that it still hits here a little bit? I filed it down enough where you don't even notice it. MRT PTX for picking up lap times, uh, power switch for the electronic speed control, and then all the wiring is just kind of, kind of tucked down here in this little groove that I made between the servo and the speed control. So there is a lot of wiring down in there. I would like to clean that up eventually. Uh, there is a tool that you can get where you can shorten these servo leads. I do not own it, but a couple of friends of mine do have it, so I might ask them to clean some of this up because there's, there's a good probably three feet of wiring in here that I don't need at all. Uh, you know, everything is so short. I could just have it direct connect. But what I did do is I used these little cable ties and these are little Velcro cable ties. I got this as a freebie on an RC Mart order. Uh, at the end of 2019, they were giving these out with orders for free. Pretty useful. So I just cut a little strip off and then it becomes its own cable tie. It's just a Velcro loop. The receiver that I'm using is the Samwell compatible ARX 482R and uh, yeah I've had no problems with that. I didn't have enough of those so I pulled it out of one of my on-road cars but I do have another one on the way. So out of all the things I was waiting on, I was waiting on receiver, wheels and tires. Um, I had to go to the hobby shop a couple times as you saw to pick up a couple of little things like these bullet connectors. Uh, oh the, um, the sensor wire. The sensor wire is a very tight unit I got it 150 millimeters plugs in here goes down under the battery I have it fiberglass taped down to the chassis and then it pokes up here and plugs in the battery is just elastic in the place and I've got it set up where I can just undo the one side and then pull it out I like that and then my Sensor cable is down the center channel. Now the sensor cable that I got is not a lay flat design. It's got this rubber thing on it and it sticks up a little bit, but I might change it eventually, but for now it works. And uh, I think we're, I think we're in pretty good shape. All I need to do now is track test it. I'm gonna take it to uh, racing tonight and I'm gonna borrow someone's wheels and tires and we're gonna try it out on the track. So I'll, uh, I'll probably give you some clips of that of the very first driving with my GoPro head cam, but then in the future I will give you uh, future videos about how I tune the electronic speed control and what I end up doing for my own wheels and tires. But for now, that's the TLR22 Elite, and uh, I'm just going to give it a quick spray with my um, PTFE dry lube spray to make it uh, so it won't stick to the dirt, because the other thing I ordered was a chassis protector, but it hasn't come in yet, so I'm just going to run it raw aluminum on the track shouldn't be too bad if it gets a scratch or whatever it gets a scratch but next step we'll take this at the track so i'll see you then. all right made it to the track 22 elites getting set up for the first time i got my borrowed wheels j concepts those are dirt webs so, yeah dirt webs front and rear miles rc's here helping me out we're uh doing ride height right now before i get out so hard board checking ride height we're going to set it to 23 millimeters front and rear um, just my setup in a box, it was way too low. I hadn't given it nearly enough ride height, so raising it up now. What you changing? Camber. <laughs> okay, what are you setting it to? Uh, negative one in the rear, negative two in the front. Okay. You were sitting at about zero in the front, and you were like positive one in the rear. Okay. That's yeah. gonna make your light up. Right? That's 0 0.09. <laughs> Uh, if it got 0.8 volts more, it would be. But yeah, it's not. It's not really as fast as I was hoping. But it's also not as slow as I worried it might be. So we'll try it. But yeah, I really am likely going to end up changing the servo soon. Let's get out there. We're ready to go. Here's the speed of the servo, which is not great, but anyway, we'll try it. I don't expect. I'm not doing it until I do that. Yeah. All right. First time driving two-wheel drive. Here we go. All right. Let's see if I can wheel this thing. Went through the first jumps. Oh, it's so slow. 
Okay, it's feels feels really slow. Like I'm not used to having the having the pull full throttle to get over a jump. Like I have to use full throttle on the doubles to to make it. <laughs> so you're adjusting my brakes down to fifty percent. Yeah so that it doesn't completely spin out when you hit the brakes. Okay. So when you get on the straight, I'm curious to see what you think of that 17.5, which is bog standard Aries Pro versus whatever you're using. Yeah, it's pretty slow. Yeah. What pinion did you put in it? 28. So I think I'm at a 6.24 FDR. I think you need to adjust your timing. Are your steering end points all maxed out? Pretty close. Well, I mean, like, I've dialed them back so I'm not hitting the bump stop. Two wheel drive, took them all the way. Really? So I want it to smash into the bump stop? Just need to flush the thing. Okay. Yeah, I'm just. I'm not, I'm not quite touching them. So anyway, you're wheeling it better than I am. Just a couple of setup things and I think I should be fine for first night. Okay, just quickly, we dialed down brake and dialed up steering. So it's now touching the bump stop um, as apparently you do want that for two wheel drive. So I'll try that now. Didn't have the momentum I wanted for that. I think I can do that, right? Add a curve. Whoop. It's okay. Sorry, I was just making some changes. Yeah, that smooths out the, the pull because I yeah. I'm used to mashing the throttle at like four wheel. Yeah. That'll help you to smoothen it out. And once you start getting used to it, then you want to slowly uh, decrease that. Yeah. yeah that, I'm at zero. That's gonna help me. That's gonna help me a lot, I think. Whoop. Increase it even more if you still have problems. But uh, yeah, so your target is to get to zero eventually. Yeah, there's see how it spins it around. So I think we're going to end the build of the TLR 22 Elite here where successfully saw the first run, a little practice run. We'll end this video and then the next one will be an actual qualifier and a race. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, just comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching.